morning. Uh, I almost said welcome to Spring Community Church, and that would have been weird. So uh, I had to assure my people. I was like, listen, this is not an interview. I promise you. Like, it's barely even a first date. Like, we're only getting coffee with them. It's fine. Like, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, but love that your elders are doing what they're doing, by the way. Uh, being one of the elders at Dayspring, like this is essential stuff. And so I'm just so glad that they, they were like, man, this is worth it. It's worth us to leave and go and seek the Lord uh, and just create vision for your church. And so just so thankful uh, for the men that are leading your guys' church. Um, and you can see the health uh, through the growth, which is awesome. So great job, Grace Fellowship. So I've had an opportunity to get to watch uh, the last couple live streams. I wanted to track along where you guys were going in this sermon series. And so it's been good so far. I remember watching and I was like, "Woo! okay, Josh will get you. Like he'll get you right in the gut when he needs to, right? Um, and then I also quickly realized if I'm going to make these people comfortable with having a guest speaker, I'm going to have to say amen a lot more because he is an amener. You know, I'm usually a yeah, I'll, I'll go with yes, and, and, but he goes, amen, and you guys say, amen. amen, yeah, you do, I can hear you on the live stream, like that's how loud it is, so, but just an honor to be here. Hey, so for the next few weeks, as you guys are going through messy matrimony, you guys are going to have uh, specific topics within marriage that can get messy, uh, that can be really hard to navigate and really hard to deal with, um, areas that sin likes to show up, that Satan likes to get a foothold in there, and will have nothing more than to at the very least disrupt, if not destroy, this covenant bond that God has created between two people. Amen? Amen. See, y'all are so trained. I love it. All right. So I get to speak this week on communication, which I'm super excited about. And man, talk about a broad topic. As I was putting this together, I was like, man, this is like four sermons um, that I'm trying to get into one. And so I preached in front of the mirror a couple of times yesterday just to check my time. And I was over every single time, but the guy did a really good job. And so I wasn't mad at him. Um, but I'm going to do my best to, to keep it within. I know lunch is right after this, and that's super important. So, well, if we're going to talk about communication, I think we have to decide if communication is important, right? Um, but before we get into that, I, I, I always like to look at people, if I'm struggling in an area, uh, who are doing it uh, worse than me. <laughs> makes me feel a little bit better. Anybody else? Like parenting, if I feel real bad about my parenting, I just take a trip to Walmart and I'm like, I'm doing all right. Like I'm doing good. It's, it's fine. And I go home feeling way better about myself. And so let's do the same with communication because we've all had missteps in communications. So really fun this week was get to look into some of those, because I wasn't going to share any personal ones, but like uh, get into some I've seen on the internet, uh, some really good uh, miscommunications uh, that just made me laugh. And so I'm gonna, this first one I'm going to throw up there, if, you, if you're a parent, right? It says, my toddler was about to hit her head on a bar at the playground. So I told her to duck and she quacked at me and then she hit her head. <laughs> miscommunication, right? Parent, child struggles. Does this get easier as they get teenagers? No, they just quack louder, right? And the bars are bigger that they run into, yeah? Uh, I mean, amen? Uh, I'll get there. I'll get there, guys. By third service, I'm going to have it down. Y'all are going to miss it, but I'm going to have all my amens down by third service. All right, so also, um, sometimes we, it's not a bad miscommunication. We just misunderstand. I say one thing, you hear one thing, and they're different, right? And so this one is cracking me up. It says, husband and I were reminiscing about the time I texted him on my way home. I imagine starting with like, hey, babe, or hey, boo, uh, can you start cooking those sausages? And then I added a little cute heart, um, just, you know, like, hey, you're doing a favor. Thanks, babe. Um, and I got home, and there was two sausages cooked. <laughs> okay, so some of you know math, who laughed, right? What does that symbol mean? Less than what? Three. Less than three. He did his job. <laughs> he understood the mission, right? He's like, I cooked two, I cooked less than three sausages, just like you asked me, Right? Simple miscommunications. It happens all the time. So have you ever overshared before? Anybody accidentally overshared with somebody and you're like, ooh, wish I could take that back. Yeah, here's this text. Right? You're already reading ahead. It says, I'm here for you. And she's like, thanks. I'm going through a tough time, so it means a lot. I'm sorry, I lost all my contacts. Who is this? Uh, this is your Uber driver. Uh, I'm here to pick you up. She's like, oh, right? And I can, can you just see him in the car before she comes down like, this is going to be a long drive. Like, <laughs> it could be a mile, and it's going to be a long drive, yes? All right, and the last one, man, sometimes we just get vernacular wrong, or, or the older I get, the more slang I misuse or misunderstand, yes? And so that's what happened in this situation right here. Um, this mom is saying, hey, your great aunt just passed away, LOL. 
It's like, why is that funny? It's not funny, David. What do you mean? Mom, LOL means laughing out loud. Oh my goodness, I sent that to everyone. I thought it means lots of love. <laughs> I have to text everybody back and let them know like what I really meant, yeah? So we all have miscommunication issues. We all get our communication messy sometimes. None of us are immune to it, right? Um, and so I think if this is important enough, uh, or let me ask a question. Why was this important enough to be one of the topics that your elders decided this needs to be part of our marriage um, series that we're going to go through, right? Like they know you guys super well in and out. And they're like, man, this one, this one. And so I guess we have to decide as a body, like, do we, is communication important, right? What are we doing here this morning? Listen to this message if it isn't. And so let me just tell you as a therapist, um, when I see clients who come in for like marriage counseling, what do you think was the number one thing they tell me they want to work on? Yes, communication. Absolutely. Happens every single time. But when I was diving into the research and just looking when it comes to divorce, right? So when it gets so messy that we decide we can't even do this relationship anymore, what do you think is the number one reason they cite for their divorce? It's communication. We can't communicate, right? Um, and so it is uh, what they say, 65% of divorces, that's the number one reason listed for divorce. And then the second is inability to resolve issues, Kind of feel like those are tied, right? At 43%. Inability to resolve issues, communication, those go together. And so again, I'm not super math smart, but that's 108% of divorces, right? And communication is the number one uh, reason for divorce. So I guess it's important. And I love that research says this, but man, if the Bible doesn't say it, then I really don't care what research says, okay? So what does the Bible say about communication? Well, it starts with communication, right? The very first thing that we see God doing is speaking, right? He speaks this entire world. He speaks all of this into existence. And I love when you read it, it says, with a word, with a word. It could have been anything. It could have been a, a moving of his hand and the world was, you know, formed in creation or a, a flick of his, uh, a snap of his finger, a flick of his wrist or, but it was a word that spoke everything that we know into being, and then not just even into being, but it's with a word that he spoke it into order too. It worked, right? Good communication like creates beautiful things that are in order. And so we see scripture even starting with that. And then we go all the way to the end, right? In Revelation. And what is Revelation? But it's a message. It is communication from the Lord to the apostle John saying, hey, I want you to know what this is going to look like at the end. I kind of want you to see, I don't want you to freak out. I mean, it's going to be freaky, but like, um, here's the message. I'm going to communicate clearly to you where I'm at, where my heart's at, where this is going to go, right? So literally scripture starts and ends with communication. And unlike some things in scripture, you can see, um, well, that was part of the old covenant, or this is because of the, in the new Testament, or man, I don't believe that tongues work anymore, or maybe the tongues, there's the gift still like, we can find things in scripture that we can debate about when in time or in history, it's still applicable. Communication is throughout the entire text, right? It is everywhere. There's no time in the history of history uh, that communication isn't important or isn't uh, cited or used um, or focused on in scripture. So I think scripture would agree. Communication is important. Would you guys agree? Amen. 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 I love when science says amen to the Bible, by the way right? When scientists are like, we've discovered, and you're like, yeah, that's in there. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, we knew that already. That's good. All right. So if it's important, so I think we're on the same page, y'all said amen, which means agree, right? So you've, you can't go back now. Um, let's talk about why communication is important. And I'll give you the super churchy yet like fully accurate answer to this. Why is communication important? Because God is crazy insanely, madly in love with you. He is so enthralled by you. He's so like obsessed with us that he's like, oh, I need this to be a two-way thing. Like I just love them so much. They are the pinnacle of what I've created and what I've made. And I just want that back. I want it to go both ways. And so there's this, this thing that he's wired into us that is to communicate that is to share, that is to, to talk, that is to spend time with, and that it, it somehow is meaningful and fulfilling to us, right? Like he did that. He hardwired that. He decided that. So it's important because he is so 
in love with you. And so communication really is the fuel for connection, right? So not only did he decide, well, he decided he wanted to be in connection with us and he decided communication is going to be the means in which to create that connection, right? Communication is the fuel, connection is the vehicle, okay? And where's this vehicle going? We'll talk about that in a second. But he so bad wants to be in connection with us, hardwired for connection, guys. Every man, woman, and child, we suffer in isolation, right? We suffer when we don't have meaningful relationships in our life. And he knew that. And so he gave us communication to help satisfy those needs. So connection is the only beginning, um, and it's the vehicle. And where is it taking us to? Well, connection, the vehicle of connection is going to take us to intimacy. So why am I talking about this when we're talking about communication? Because you can't have intimacy without communication, okay? And so intimacy is like the, the, is the ultimate destination that God wants to meet us at. And let me break the word down, right? And it's not spelled this way, but go with me on this one. I think you'll see that it kind of sticks. But like slow down and speak it, right? Into me see. Into me see. I want you to into me see. Right? God is like, I want you to into me see, and I want to into you see. I want to be in this intimate relationship with you. And we can't have that without connection. But the way he wired us for connection is through communication. So is communication important? Oh, yeah. 100%. Super priority to God. Um, intimacy is where we came from, and it's what we're made for. That is the ultimate destination for all of us, is to be in intimate relationships, to be fully known and be fully loved by other people. And why do we crave that with people? Because every single horizontal relationship that we have on this earth is a representation, it's a sign of a horizontal relationship. Every way that we love this way is one of the ways that God loves us this way, right? So if you've been married, you are married, you understand that kind of love from God. If you get a chance to be a parent, you understand that kind of love. Oh my gosh, God loves me like this? I had no idea, right? There's something that you don't fully understand quite until you're a parent sometimes. And then friendship, and there's just all these horizontal relationships are all signs pointing us to one of the horizontal, uh, vertical ways that God wants to love us. Isn't that amazing? Like he's so obsessed with us. I think it's kind of cool and creepy, but it's great. Um, and so intimacy is really the original location that we were meant to live, right? Before sin, we lived in a perfect, intimate relationship with God. Perfect connection, perfect communication. We were right there, right? Um, we see even in uh, Genesis 2, yeah, it says they were naked and unashamed, right? Perfect connection. When was the last time you all felt that way? Naked and unashamed. Uh, oh, somebody raised their hand. I think it was a small child. They are naked and unashamed, by the way. My son, just nine years old, don't care. No, nope, yep. I'm like, well, it was cute when you were younger. It's not cute anymore. So intimacy is something we lost with sin, right? It was something that affects, sin affected that. Sin damaged that, yes? And so to build intimacy with God and to build intimacy in these horizontal relationships that we're all involved in, spe excuse me, specifically our marriage, we just need two ingredients. I love that God kept it simple. He's like, y'all need it simple. <laughs> um, so he said, time spent together talking about things that are important. That's all you need right? To build intimacy with someone, to build intimacy with your spouse, to build intimacy with your child, to build intimacy um, in the co-working environment, to build intimacy with other, um, what do you guys call yourself? Gracers? I don't, what's, do you have a name? We're day springers. I don't know if you've got a name for each other. The church. Yeah, the church. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. With other brothers and sisters in the church, you need time spent together talking about things that are important. That's going to build intimacy every single time. So that's all you need, two simple ingredients, right? But we find a way as humans to mess things up. Have you ever noticed that? Something can be going well, um, and maybe it's going too well, and we find a way to just throw a wrench in it and mess it up. And so what are four ways, and there are more, this is not an all-inclusive list, uh, but what are four ways that communication can get messy, uh, specifically in marriage? So those, that's kind of what we were talking about today. Um, what are those so we can identify those, allow God to work on us through those, sanctify us in that process. So what are four different ways? And I decided I'll open it up easy. Okay, I'm going to take it easy because you guys aren't my people. Um, so we're going to slowly wade into the water, but then it's going to get so strong after that, okay? And some of y'all are going to be like, this wasn't easy, so I'm going to go to that first one. Uh, our screens and our schedules. Ooh, 
okay, I heard that. Like, that was across the room. Like, ooh. Yeah, that knowing, like, ooh. Uh, screens and schedules, right? So if intimacy takes time spent together, well, that's hard, right? Just talking about things that are important, it's very hard to build intimacy. It's very hard to have that connection. It's very hard to have that communication with our screens and schedules that look the way they do for us. As Americans, specifically, man, we try to fill every single moment. There's something to do. Don't rest. Rest is a four-letter cuss word, y'all, in our culture, right? Um, so we go and we go and we go. And then we expect our children to go and go and go and sign them up for ballet and soccer and baseball and, the, and, 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 and. And then all of a sudden, there's no time in their schedule or ours. And then, because we're so exhausted when we get to the end of the night, we just veg out to what? Our screens. If it's the show that we want to binge watch or the social media we want to just not, I just don't want to think about anything. I'm just so tired. You know the day that I had. I've been so busy, right? And so our screens and our schedules are the very first thing that get our communication messy. And let me tell you something. There is zero excuse. I don't want to hear, I don't have the time for because let me tell you something, and this is, okay, this is going to be a little bit strong. I said it's going to be soft, but maybe not. You have time for everything that God has asked you to do. If you find yourself with not enough time, the math then says you are doing things that God has not asked you to do. And very quickly, just know, not every good thing is a God thing, Okay. It's good to serve, and it's good to volunteer, and it's good to have develop a well-rounded child, but every good thing is not necessarily a God thing. So I'll say it again. You have time for every single thing that God has asked you to do. So if you were in a marriage, and you're like, we just don't have time to talk. Yes, you do. If God has asked you to be married, then you have time for communication in your marriage. If God has asked you to be a parent, you have time to communicate and connect with and build intimacy with your child. You have time for it. You get to choose how you want to use it. Yeah? So our screens and our schedules are one. What is another one? Man, sin, right? Like, man, you can't go to church and not talk about sin. Sin can get our communication messy every single time. And why? I'll tell you why. Growing up, I grew up in the church. I was kind of raised in church. And sin was very much um, a list of things that I couldn't do or shouldn't do um, that were probably good for me, but I should follow these and check these and we're going to be good and don't sin. As I've gotten older and matured, um, I really understand sin to more mean anything that creates distance between God and I. Anything that creates distance between God and I is a sin in my life. Now, there are certain sins I think we can agree upon that everybody, it's going to be a sin for all of us. Um, if we do these certain things, it doesn't matter who you are, that sin, it's going to create distance between God and I because that's how God designed it. Then I think there are things that are sins in my life that may not be sins in your life. If I struggled with alcohol, there are certain things that might be sinful for me to do that may not be sinful for you to do. If I struggled with food, there might be certain things that are sinful for me to do that may not be sinful for you to do. So I really understand this definition to mean anything in my life that creates distance between God and I. And again, that horizontal and that vertical, I think I did those backwards. Um, if it's creating distance between God and I, it's creating distance in my marriage. 100%. It's creating distance in my marriage. And so sin, that's what sin does. Now confess sin does the opposite, which is amazing. If I've got two people in a marriage who are both seeking the Lord, it's not that either one of you are going to necessarily be perfect the entire time, but it's when sin happens, I let you into me see, and I share it with you, and then you forgive me, and then it closes that gap, right? Then the distance is gone. Because what does Satan need to get into our life? What does scripture say? How much space or room does he need? I'll give you a sign. Just a foothold. That's all he needs. Just a foothold, right? He doesn't need this huge gap to get in there. He needs just a foothold. So I want to confess that sin to close that gap. So the real problem actually isn't sin. I know that sounds weird for a pastor to say that because if we confess it, um, it will bring us close together. The real problem is unconfessed sin in my marriage. 
because what does that lead to? Every single time, unconfessed sin leads to shame every single time. And what is shame? Shame is this belief that I am unworthy. There's something so inherently flawed or broken about me that if you did into me see, you would run. You would leave. You wouldn't want it. Right? So I, I sin or shame cre- creates this truth inside of me that that's accurate. And so that is super damaging to communication because if I do communicate with you and I'm in shame, at the best, I'm giving you a false version of myself, right? Like it, it's this, this artificial or a mask that I let you see or connect with. You're not actually connecting with me. You're connecting with this version of me that I've kind of created. And so when, sh- sin, excuse me, when shame is present, I got to do one of three things with it. I can believe it. I can believe that's actually who I am. And then I kind of just disappear inside my own relationship, right? I just disappear inside my own marriage. Um, I'm there, but I'm not there, right? If I don't think I'm worthy of connection with you, which means I'm not worthy of communication with you, which certainly means I'm not worthy of intimacy with you, I just kind of go away. Um, Or I can choose to ignore it. I hear the messages, but I, I, I press them down. But man, much like a little kid who's asking for a snack and you don't give him a snack, they just get louder, right? Um, and that's the same thing that shame does. Shame like demands to be heard and felt, right? And so it will get louder until you have to do something with it. And so then it gets so loud and I still have this gap in my relationship because of my unconfessed sin. And I'm hearing the shame and I don't want to deal with it and I don't want to confess it. And so I got to do something with this gap. And if I'm not willing to own the fact that there's a gap, you are. Maybe if you were a little nicer when I came home, I wouldn't hang out at the bar and I'd come straight home to my family. What do you think about that, honey? Well, maybe if you didn't act so much like your father and speak to our children like that, I'd want to be engaged with you when we go to this practice. Maybe if we we start blaming, man, because somebody's got to be accountable for this gap in our marriage that's creating this mess in our communication. And if I'm not going to own it, I'm going to try to make you own it. And it's super dangerous and very destructive and very messy. I don't think messy is the word for that one, but it's very messy in our marriages when we allow that to happen. So what's the other one? You're like, oh, there's another one. I can't take another one. Can we stop? I need a break. Um, so maybe you guys are thinking though, like, okay, so this isn't me. Like, I, I, I'm not really any of these things, right? Like, we're pretty good with our, our time. We make sure we have date nights. We're barely on our phones. Um, gosh, as far as I know, I, I confess my sin to him. He's conf- or she's confessed her sin to me. I think we're good there, which then kind of leaves no room for, for shame to creep in. I'll tell you, there is something that can make messy communication in all of our relationships that you don't get a choice about. And we all have one. And that's our story. Right? If you're married, specifically married, you need to understand you do not just marry a person. You marry their entire story. Right? So the messy part of the communication might be all those days in life where y'all didn't know each other, but they were being raised to believe something about communication. Or they were being raised to believe something about themselves that may or may not be true. That maybe if I just keep my head down and I'm quiet, when dad rages, he'll just take it on the other siblings, but I'll be okay. So I'm just going to shut down when things get real. We take that into our marriage. Or we take, if I want to be heard in this family, I'm going to be loud. I have to be loud. Or I watched my mom get walked all over uh, like a a doormat, and I'm not going to let that happen in my marriage, so you're going to hear me. We take that into our marriage, right? We take that the words I say don't matter because my opinion was always called stupid into our marriage. We take take so much in our story into our marriages that can make our communication messy. Not everything you were taught growing up was right, right? Right? But amen. Uh, but then we get pulled into this marriage and somebody else brings their whole story and it comes along my whole story. And then we try to make our own story and wonder why it's messy sometimes. Of course it's going to be messy. So I hope you all are encouraged so far, right? <laughs> How many of you are not married and now plan to stay that way? <laughs> You're like, you convinced me. I was thinking about it, but how many dating apps just got deleted on somebody's phone, right? So I'll tell you, (laughs) there's good news. I promise you, there's good news. Um, Wouldn't you know it that scripture has the answer to clean up the mess? Isn't that encouraging? 
man, it is messy, right? We are, we are promised suffering in this world. I mean, Romans 8 talks about the groaning that we experience as if in the pains of childbirth, just longing to be redeemed, right? Longing to be brought back to that place of intimacy and perfection uh, in relationship with God. We, we groan for it. It says nature groans for it. Like they want, it wants perfection. Um, it wants perfect intimacy again. And so scripture doesn't leave us hanging. So if you've got your Bibles, I would say turn to Colossians chapter 3. Um, it's, we're going to start in verse 12. And I'll give you a little bit of context while you guys pull up your phones or open up your Bibles. Um, and the, it will be on the screen as well. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Now, just for some context, Paul is writing this letter to, it really is addressed to the entire church, right, um, in that city. And so they're te- he's helping to teach them um, there was a way you used to do things, and now there's a way you ought to do things, right? So it's a very instructional letter that he's giving them. And so he's not reading, or he's not writing this to married couples. So I just want to make that clear that that's actually not who he's writing this to. However, there are married couples in that church, and the wisdom that is in what Paul is saying here is incredibly applicable to our communication and helping us clean it up. So I'm sure you guys are there. So Colossians 3, verse 12 says, since God chose you. Now I'll pause there because Pastor Josh talked about that last week with y'all, right? The, the power and the, the, the amazingness of getting to choose, right? And he chose you, like we talked about in the beginning, madly, crazy in love with you. And so he chose you, right? So since God did that, since he chose you to be the holy people he loves, you, what? You maybe should? You must, one person read it, you, you what? Thank you. You must clothe yourself with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. If I held up the way I speak to my spouse in this hand, and then I held up the descriptions of how I should be speaking and treating and living that Paul just gave us in this hand, how would they compare? How would you do? A rhetorical question. Don't need you to answer that. But how would you do? And who else does this sound like? Who else is tenderhearted mercy, full of kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience? Who is this? Yes. Y'all are good. You know church. Yes, you know church. It's Jesus. Always the right answer in church, right? Like he's describing Jesus. Like live like this. Speak like this. But then he doesn't stop there. He says, make allowance for each other's faults. Whew. How many times have you done that? How many? Seven times 70. Yeah. We're doing a lot of math today. I don't know why. Um, What's all the math? Um, Yeah. Make allowances for each other. What does that mean? That means when part of their story shows up, I've already, making allowance, by the way, means like predetermining that I'm going to have room. And what's that room? That room is grace. I'm going to have room. I'm going to have grace for the part of their story that might show up that's going to rub me the wrong way or that I'm not going to understand. Or I don't know why you communicate that way or what, what takes you so long to respond to me. I'm going to have an allowance for that. There's going to be room for my spouse to just like be in this relationship with me. Now, if you want to increase intimacy, if you want to be somebody who can into me see, I want somebody to look inside of me who's merciful. And what does mercy mean, right? You don't give me what I deserve. Man, I need that in a marriage, right? If my wife was here, she'd be like, hey, amen. Yeah, she would second that. But we need that mercy. And then I want to be into me see with somebody who's kind and somebody who is uh, humble and gentle and patient with me. I got no problem showing you this stuff if you're this person. So if you're sitting there wondering, well, my spouse doesn't open up to me, that might have more to do with you. How safe are you? How gentle are you? How patient are you? Why would they confess this sin to you? They've seen you, rip their, or they've seen you rip your friend's head off when they confess something to you, or they see how you hold that grudge against your dad still 20 years later. Why am I going to tell you about my sin? You can't even forgive them. How forgiving are you? 
If you wonder why there's sin or there's shame or there's parts of my story I haven't shared, man, quit looking at your spouse. How am I doing here? Are you this person? You want to clean up the mess? It starts with you. It starts with you. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Doesn't seem like a choice to me. That's more of a command. And above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your heart. For as members of one body, you're called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your life. So I don't know where you're at in your communication. I don't know where you're at in your connection. And I don't know where you're at in your intimacy, specifically with your spouse. But really, it does just bleed over into all of our other relationships. But I know that scripture has an answer for us. So I don't know what part the Holy Spirit is asking you to let him, you're not doing the work, let him clean up inside of you. But I pray that you have open ears for that. And that you're willing to listen and to see and let him explore that with you. And guess what? Let him into you see so he can call those things out. So we can heal them and we can deal with them and we can clean up the mess that we've created in our matrimony around communication. So I got a few questions I just want to challenge you guys with because that wasn't enough. Um, <laughs> but I don't want it to end here. I want you guys to take this home, right? I never want to see any of you as a client <laughs> because your marriage is so great, right? You're like, I don't need to go see a therapist. We're doing great. I'm clothing myself in love and I'm gentle and I'm patient and we're good. Yes, I would love that. Um, so ask these questions to yourself, right? And be serious. Like, let this go deep. Maybe you take a picture of this because you're like, yeah, I identify with many of those, so I need to remember. Um, but where have screens and schedules gotten in the way of our communication? You sat down and you had a conversation with your spouse tonight. What would be said about that? Man, where is unconfessed sin existing inside of me that needs to be shared? Or on the other end of that, do I need to allow forgiveness for my spouse where they have already confessed? Right? Some of you are the spouse sitting here. It's like, I've, I've told them. I hated that I did that. And I told them about it. And they just hold it over my head. And they're not letting it go. And it is causing all kinds of disturbances in our intimacy, which is making me not want to connect, which is why I shut down when we communicate. Y'all need to let that go. Y'all need to forgive them like today. Right? I know you guys have an amazing prayer team here. And I know they're available to you after the service. Y'all go talk to them and do that today. Don't take that home. Clean that mess up today. Um, where have I believed shame when it told me I wasn't enough? What would the Holy Spirit speak to you about that? What do we have to say about it? Where do I need to ask for forgiveness from when I allowed my shame to blame and judge my spouse? Man, when do I need to look at my spouse and go, that was way more about me than it was about you. I'm so sorry. Man, our house does look great. I know you do a hard job. I know you work super hard to keep it cleaned up. I'm so sorry. I, the part, why I keep pointing this stuff out is because I'm just frustrated with myself because there's things I haven't told you. Or vice versa, right? Like, I, I really am happy with you, honey. Uh, you are the husband who I want and I love. I pick at these things because I have something I haven't told you about. And I'm scared to confess it to you. Or maybe it's what parts of my story do I need to come to terms with and share with my spouse? The irony of parts of my story is that they stop me from telling parts of my story. Don't let parts of your story get in the way of sharing parts of your story. Don't, don't let that block the intimacy. Or where do I need to grace parts of my spouse's story? I mean, there are some wounds that come from our upbringing that aren't going to get fixed in the first 20 years of my marriage. Do I have enough grace for that? Have I made enough allowance for that in my marriage? And then lastly, and I really didn't get to talk about this just because of time, but this, so the question may not make sense, but how am I not living a life worthy of being a resident of intimacy? And what I meant by that was just that this original place that we were supposed to live, this original relationship that we were supposed to be in a perfect intimacy before sin came and, and everything that was described in Colossians 3, like where there. Am I not hitting those things? Where there can I allow the Holy Spirit to fill me, change me, sanctify me, that I look more like that tomorrow than I did today? So what I'm going to ask is that you guys just bow your heads, close your eyes, and you just give the Lord a minute 
two minutes to speak to you, to identify this inside of you. Where is this? God, what would you do in this? God, give me the courage to let you into me see. God, give me the desire to into you see. So just take a minute. Father, we love you so much. And I'm just so in awe of when I think about how much you love me. And I'm so grateful that you desire this to be a two-way thing. And God, while, while I want to grow in that vertical way with you, Lord, I pray that you'd also help us all grow in these horizontal relationships that you gave us. God, that grace would abound in this room and in these marriages today. God, that forgiveness would flow over. I couldn't help but forgive you. That it would like bleed out of us this morning. And Holy Spirit, be speaking to us about these, these ways in which we're supposed to live, these, these ways in which we're supposed to clothe ourselves. To help us keep from our communication getting messy. Let's keep it from getting messy to begin with. Thank you for always having an answer. Thank you for always being enough. God, we love you. And it's your name that I pray. Amen. Amen.